Happy Monday, friends. Welcome to Jason Unleashed. How's it going? I'm your host, Jason Carter. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. I did. Glad to be here with you guys for a new week. And today's guest is someone who is simply stellar. She is Devin Simone. You've seen her everywhere. You've seen her on Extra, The Today Show, Good Morning America, E! Nightline. And she is here today. She is a dating expert and matchmaker. And in this time of quarantine, a lot of people are wondering, how do you date while we are sequestered, while we are sheltering at home, not really having any kind of social interaction that's physical, but it's mainly digital. So she's going to be on the show in just a few. Let's bring Devin into the show. Devin, 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 Devin. You know, I always have that lag before we connect. Hello. Hey, hey. hey how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. How's quarantine life? The most. The yeah. most. Do you feel good? Yeah. How are you doing? I am doing well. I can't complain. I'm healthy, which is good. Uh, so far, my family is healthy, which is good. I can tell you, so I'm in the middle of wedding planning right now. Literally, thank you. But the worst time, the wor there has never been a worse time to right. plan a wedding uh now is that time so that's not great uh but otherwise and it's a destination wedding so really not great but you know whatever okay what destination weddings i'm sorry but those are like just everything that it seems like a headache because not only do people have to fly but i mean how do you how do you effectively plan a destination wedding i mean because there's so many variables that, that could go wrong that are not in your control so well corona aside we found these amazing wedding planners when we were in Portugal. So that's where it's supposed to be. And they are really great because it was sort of like a one-stop shop for a lot of things. So the venue's covered, flowers are covered, uh, music is covered, like chairs and all that stuff. So, so we actually thought, cool, we booked it a year ago almost. And we were like, cool, great, 90%. We are so ahead of this wedding game. Like nothing is gonna stress us, this is a breeze. Yeah. No. Uh, now, we don't know if people will be able to fly to Portugal. Is it even safe to go to Portugal? Should we continue planning and book all these other things or not? It's just a hot mess. So, uh, well, you know. well it's, I'm sure it's all going to work out. And uh, again, congratulations on, on the wedding. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. Devin Simone, I've been a fan for the longest time. I love watching you on Wendy. Out of all the people they have on Wendy who, who read, you read the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that I, I usher, I keep it real. No, you keep it all the way real. The usher, the, you, um, I was watching. Uh, oh, you were on Wendy, and you were talking about Usher and how the people who came forward <laughs> about you know the whole uh, herpes game with Usher mm -hmm. and just how you broke it down was genius. And you're like, look, he could pivot and have a whole and uh, have a whole you know uh, corporation based on on Usher projects to help prevent herpes. I was like, yeah. brilliant. Only you would think of that. It's all about the pivot, all about the pivot, right? You just got to pivot whatever it throws at you. I mean, I really feel like he should explore that avenue, but, you know. You know, you have been fascinated with relationships. You are an expert matchmaker. You are a dating expert. The three-day rule is phenomenal. When did you know that you wanted to become that person that links people together and helps them find love? You know, I started out nosy, and I don't know, maybe you, some people can relate to this. Like, I, I never grew up being like, I'm gonna be a matchmaker. I also never grew up going, I'm gonna be on real world. It was quite the opposite. But I, you know, my parents divorced. Uh, I'm from Kansas City. My parents divorced when I was two. And then they remarried people their own ages, because there was a 15 year age difference. So uh, I wanted to know when I was young, okay, well, what makes these new relationships work, right? Like, why does mom and stepdad work and mom and dad didn't work and vice versa? So I would spend my allowance on relationship and self-help books and psychology books and all of that as a kid, because I was just so fascinated with hearing other people's love stories and then trying to determine the patterns of what seemed to consistently work, you know, and things that, that, you know, consistently didn't work. And so eventually that turned into unsolicited advice and solicited advice. And now, you know, fast forward years later, I've had a television show around dating called Love at First Wipe. While we're in quarantine and you're in lockdown with nothing to watch, feel free to check it out. Did uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, and then I work as a matchmaker now at Three Day Rule, which is great. I mean, we're even in Corona, we're seeing success with new couples, people getting to know each other, doing virtual dating or going on um, a social distance dates, which is really just like a walk 
around the park. But people are just really prioritizing dating in a different way. And I love seeing people come together. So if you're single or you know someone single, like, you know, now's the time. Jump on it. Now's the time. Jump on it. Well, we're going to talk about the new way of dating. Just if you want to get back to you, though, and, um, and you having your kind of love life play out on the real world from Brooklyn. Um, 2009, 2021, you were a cast member, right? And all of America yeah. got to see Devin in, 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 in her realest form in relationships God. and love. It was cool, though. It was cool. But <laughs> you being, you know, you having this, this um, affinity for matchmaking and love from a young age, was that, was that a time in your life where your, the foundation of what you thought love would be was rocked? And where you, where you kind of have to revisit, like, whoa, do I believe in love anymore? You know, without getting too deep on you guys, like I'll, so I, I'll say this, right? So I've done real world and then I did two challenges afterwards. And my struggle with my time on real world is that I was so worried about making sure I didn't offend or hurt anyone that I kept a certain wall up. Like I didn't talk about certain things. The producers hated me. They were pissed. And so <laughs> then you didn't get the full story when you watch it. So even now I cringe a little bit because there are things that you see regarding my college sweetheart David at the time uh, that I feel like weren't indicative of what was really happening because I was trying to like hide it. Um, but I was really in love with that boy and we're friends to this day, which is great. He didn't talk to me for a few years after Real World, you know, which is fine. Um, but <laughs> I was really in love with him. Unfortunately, that relationship was really unhealthy for both of us. And I actually saw Real World as an escape from that. Like, I'll be candid with you guys. It was, it had gotten to places where it was borderline physically abusive. Wow. And, um, and so, yeah, there was, I, I was sort of like rocked by that. What does that mean? What does that look like? We're in a great place now. Um, but real world, I remember praying that I would get cast on real world because it was actually a, an easy exit for me or easier exit for me to like break away. Cause we lived together. We worked together. We had the same friends. So our lives are very much enmeshed, but I learned a lot from that. And I'm in such a like better and refreshed place now like I joke I used to date like a dumbass so that you don't have to no one else right. has to because I've learned the lessons I've been through things and I t interviewed thousands of people thousands of single people at this point so um yes I know a lot more now than Devin on real world did so don't judge me or my wigs or my weeds because god they were bad back then it, too it was all part, of, all part of the journey but you said you've done the work so we don't have to let's talk about your work because Devin You've been everywhere from Nightline, Good Morning America, Extra, OK Magazine, Rachel Ray. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And like you said, you've interviewed thousands of people when it comes to finding love. Are you ever still surprised by some of the things you find out? And are you still constantly learning about dating yourself? Because much like psychologists, right, you have to, they diagnose other people's problems or help people work through their problems. but. Are you finding out things and learning about yourself in love through all these interviews and connecting with people? I always say I hold myself to the same standard I hold anyone else, right? Or anything I would advise my clients or someone that I'm working on. I am by no means perfect. Uh, Johnny, my fiance, will tell you that. Uh, but I certainly do try. And it is what I love about love and dating relationships is even if you're in a relationship, there's so much to learn all the time, right? Like they're eating, especially now, everything's just been flipped upside down. And so there's always things to learn in terms of interacting. But there are three key things. I'm working on a book. I've been saying this for years. It needs to come. It will come. We're going to just put it out there right now. Manifesting. That will happen. Because uh, I've been, I mean, I have time now. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, why I haven't written it yet. But I will tell you this. If you take away nothing from this conversation, Really quick, there are, we're going to group them into guys and girls. Now, with women, there are three key things. Every woman, get a pen and paper. Anybody single watching this, there are three key things that every woman is evaluating her partner on. Like, if she's determining whether or not I want to date you, want to marry you, be in a relationship with you, here are the three. She's saying, do I feel safe? Do they make me feel special? And do they make me feel sexy? Period. It's those three. And if you go back and chart the breakup, and for the women watching, if you go back and try and look at why you didn't feel ultimately that chemistry with that person, I guarantee you it will come down to one of those three categories. Safety, that can be in the form of, is the person taller than me? Do they have a financially stable career? You know, do, are they a good decision maker? Do they care if I got home safely? Feeling special is, do they notice the little things about you? Are they excited about your goals? Are they really listening to you? Sexy, we know what that one is. They're not all equal in the beginning, but those three components are exactly what it is. It does not change. Now, men. Well, okay. Oh, go ahead. 
No, because I was gonna yes. say it, but does does it have does a gender specificity have to apply? I mean, can a man want the same thing? He can want the same thing, but we're gonna flip it to okay. to to the men. Okay. okay. And then I'll tell you where I think there may be some flexibility there. Now for men, what I have found, whether they're twenty two or ninety two, the four things that a man is evaluating on, right? He's saying, Am I attracted? Do I have fun? Do I respect this person? Do we want the same thing? Right. And number one and number four, you can't control. And so number one, you know, he's attracted to you or he's not. Number four, you guys either feel like you want the same life in general or you don't. But where we oftentimes get in this gray zone and when it doesn't work out are the two in the middle, because we'll either be so amenable and easygoing. Yeah, I'll come over and hang out at midnight. Yeah, I'll respond to that 10 p.m. text. Yeah, I'll do whatever. And so we're so amenable and fun, but they kind of lose respect for us because they know we'll right. tolerate some shit. Or the flip <laughs> side is we lay down the law. This is who I am. You better come correct. I'm doing blah, 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 blah. And so they respect the crap out of us, but it's not really fun anymore. Right. Because, and so, yes, there's some crossover. And certainly in same-sex relationships, you can apply it more to feminine energy and masculine energy. Again, we have both. Yeah. Yes, we have, everybody has both. But whichever you lead in, so if you tend to lead with your feminine energy, you're going to be more identify with the safe, uh, special, and sexy. And if you tend to lead with your masculine energy, you're going to identify a little bit more with the four that, you know, do I have, am I attracted? Do I have fun? Do I respect you? And the same things. But ultimately, it is true across the board. And when you start looking at the people you're dating or interviewing or auditioning, like that you'll get a clearer picture of why some things work, why they didn't work, and how to keep it working when you found that person. Right. So you, so would you, so, okay. So those are the, those are the off the top. Those are the, I would say the jewels to, to connecting with someone, but have you ever had an instance where, where all those things lined up or someone said, Devin, I'm following everything you say. I'm reading because when your blog is referred to as the online dating Bible, Mm -hmm. So where they're reading your blog and they're doing everything and they're following the rules and they come back and they're upset because it's not working out for them. Like what, what are the roadblocks people face in dating? Because a lot of people now more than ever, especially when you get into your, like, I was in your twenties, you're still kind of not kitty, but you're figuring it out. Right. In your thirties, you're more solid and you're more like, I'm in my career. I know what kind of person I want. But, you know, you, you, the, 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 the item list is there. Right. Then, but you have people still who are like not accountable. They're not, there's a lack of accountability for how they are in relationships. So what are some of the roadblocks that people face? Because I mean, in LGBTQ plus relationships and straight relationships, they're kind of similar, right? Right, absolutely, absolutely. Accountability is the key word, Jason. Like that is so amazing and well said. You have to be accountable at any stage in the relationship for who you are, the, the qualities you bring to the relationship, both positive and the shit you bring to the relationship, truthfully. Yeah. And a lot of times the roadblocks I see are when people can't check themselves. You have got to check yourself. <laughs> you have to recognize like, you know what? I may have messed up there or what can I be growing in? Because if you tell me he has to accept me as I am because this is me and that's it. Or she has to accept me as I am because this is me and that's it. And the, that means you stop growing. And in the world, all living things have applied to one of two categories. You're either growing or you're dying, period. A flower, a plant, a human, a soul, it's either growing, it's either on its way up. So if you're telling me this is where I am and it ain't changing, well, then you're about dead. So right. maybe you should move back from the relationship game, work on some other things, because that's not looking so good for you. So yeah. being accountable and recognizing and asking yourself, you know, something I tell my partner a lot, and I try and do too, is like, you got to learn to check your emotions. Doesn't mean you have to have control of them. But before you lash out at someone or before you even express something, try and understand why you feel that way. Because just because is not an answer. And so self-sabotage is real. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, too, for people who are career mo motivated and go-getter, sometimes what will happen with us is that, you know, this arm right here, this arm is the decision maker. It is the quick thinker. It is resilient. It, uh, it, it can navigate adversity and challenges and make stuff happen. And so that arm for someone like you, Jason, or for some of the people watching, or for me, that gets worked out on a daily basis, right? right. We are always making decisions, making moves, making things happen. This arm right here, this is the arm that allows us to be vulnerable, to let someone else take the lead, to follow, to say we need help, 
to give someone else a chance to do something for us, even though we're fully capable of doing it ourselves. And that arm doesn't always get worked as much. So this arm looks like Bugs Bunny, and this one looks like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. It's like, now you're uh, you limping around like this, <laughs> trying to have a relationship, and you're all off balance. Like, how are you going to be balanced and have a balanced relationship? So you have to work at making sure that you're balanced. And it's a, it's a constant dance. It's a fun one if you make it fun. But it's a constant dance to understand that so that you can maintain a healthy relationship. Healthy relationships are always what I think people are striving for, Devin. And, they think, and people have, uh, I would say that examples of what a healthy relationship also goes into how they view a healthy relationship. Because like we were both uh, uh, children of divorced parents, right? So that right. shapes how you view how you think relationships will go you know especially if you or if you're if you're a child of a, a violent divorce or 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 a violent home or and i hate to use the word violent but the, it exists right? it exists yeah um so where when do how do people jettison those types of ideals in relationship what what work is that how do they move beyond that the first thing is know that you don't have to repeat the pattern. You look, I love my parents and I love, and I feel fortunate that they are in a place where they are friends now, um, but, but their relationship was bad, it was terrible. Um, and I recognized at an early age that even though that's what I saw, I realized that it didn't have to be that way. Like I, I know that it didn't have to be that way and so I don't have to repeat that. So recognizing that you guys don't have to follow in what it is that you've seen. And there's enough resources out there between Google University, look, it may not be accredited, but it's not terrible. Uh, you know, Word. certain books as well. Um, so you can do research to at least get an understanding of what other options exist and are out there. And if you fall back or slide or see that you're doing something your parents did that you don't like, don't beat yourself up. It's okay. We all make mistakes. It's about just kind of working on it, acknowledging it and getting better. It's totally okay. Um, and then, you know, the other thing is I find figure out what vision you want for your life. Like look beyond the relationship. And at this point, what vision do you want for your life? Do you want to be a jet setter? Do you want to have a family and stay at home? Do you want to be a power couple with juggling multiple businesses or careers? Whatever you want, you can have, totally have. Get clear on that and then let's work backwards in terms of well, what ingredients are necessary. Like what kind of partner would share that same vision? Because I think sometimes too is they're separate. We get, we're like, I want this fine ass, blah, 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 blah. We're so focused on that. But that kind of person is very different than ultimately the life we want to lead, you know, or whatever. Like you can't have the playboy and say you want to be stay at home and have the home life in the picket fence. Right. Like those, those, you can pick one, but they right. don't mesh. They don't right. complement each other. Let's get cultural with it because we, there's a lot, you know, especially like in New York and in Los Angeles, huge cultural melting pots, right? You have, you have people of different faiths, people of different um, ways of thinking. Uh, let's touch on interracial relationships because I am in one, yes. <laughs> as are you, yeah. and and I still find it simply fascinating that in 2020, people will stop and stare at interracial couples. And if we look at commercials, if we look at the way media is has moved and evolved, especially like the last four years of what's going on in the, in, in, the, in, in our old office and just in the the, the zeitgeist interracial relationships are real. Shonda Rhimes got it right 15 years ago with shows like Grey's Anatomy that highlighted interracial relationships, right? So why do you think people are still dumbfounded by them? And, and or why do you think people are so fascinated with them too as well? Because when you're gay, there's, there's people, and let's keep it real, people fetishize women of color. People fetishize men of color. I mean, they fetishize yeah. anything that's other than what, than what they are. Why do you think that is? That's a really good question. And I just want to shout out everyone in the comments. I see everyone talking and we haven't like said hi. I just want to say hi. And thanks guys. And yeah, the challenge, I'd be dead if I were on the challenge right now. So I'm glad that I'm not, but thank you. Um, and appreciate you all. Uh, to your great question, Jay. Um, yeah, look, I mean, it's just, it is such a deep, it, that pool, it is a, this would be a four hour conversation. Um, you know, there's a variety of reasons why I think people, feel and think the way they do. I think misinformation and fear is a lot of it. I would tell anyone, especially, you know, I had this conversation with a black woman the other day about the challenges of dating as a black woman, right? Because it is different. And, um, you know, 
I would tell anyone, do not let the naysayers stop you from finding the love of your life. Yeah. And while there are perks to dating someone of the same background and culture, absolutely. Um, there are also advantages and perks of dating someone where you get to ex expose one another to new and different things. So if that person's great and they're treating you well and you're attracted to them and you're happy and they love on you the way you deserve to be loved and vice versa, screw what everybody else says. I could tell you some deep stories about the adversity my fiance. So you guys, he's white. You can go on my page and look at him if you haven't seen him. He's white. But not only is he white, he's literally probably one of the whitest people I've ever met. Um, I mean, just like, it's, he, I've said this to him before. I'm talking like boat shoes, preppy white, like excited by a sale at J. Crew white. Yeah. And that was just, <laughs> even though I'm from Kansas City and like, you know, went to private schools, I was just not quite used to dating that level of it you know um so i almost swiped left and was like this is not gonna, he's not gonna know what he called he's not gonna know about you know a sew-in versus you know a quick weave or uh soul food and he didn't know about any of those things but i'm so glad that i gave it an opportunity and chance because he's the most amazing man i've ever met i am so i literally wake up grateful for him on a daily basis and we face a lot of adversity i mean we uh his parents were not okay with it initially. Um, their friends were not okay with it. His friends were fine. His friends were great. But some of the older generation was not okay with it. And I mean, like, up until a few weeks before he proposed, made it known that they, they thought I was great. They actually indeed loved me, but they didn't feel like he should propose. Like that maybe. And he put his foot down. Oh, yeah. I had to fight for that ring. And I, it is not coming off. It is on. It is here to stay. Uh, but but yeah, go ahead. What were you? I but no, but 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 what what were the reasons why they didn't feel like you were right though? Was it? I mean, was it ra was it racial? Okay, okay. I mean, can you see the tone. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, okay. I don't know if you can Got see it. the. Yes. Uh, no, it was definitely. I mean, they didn't explicitly say right. because she's black, but it was because I was black. Um, a th a th yeah, a thousand a thousand percent. Um, and it was tough. Like it, you guys, I. There was a moment, so they, like, uh, have, a, in the summer, he spent a lot of time with his parents, and so they would spend time, um, like, I was living in the city, he was living in, in Philadelphia, I was living in New York, and they have, like, a second home on the beach in New Jersey. Side note, I didn't realize Jersey Shore is not all like it is on MTV. There's actually, <laughs> like, very, like, it's Look, really nice. I thought it was, yeah, there's actually, like, really nice and beautiful beaches. I didn't know that. But now, I, yeah, so there you go. Um, so we would go there every weekend, and it's this big, beautiful house, but it's sort of, family's really important to him, so it's kind of where we would, like, congregate. And I am the only black person in that town, and I am not exaggerating. I am, when I'm there, I am the only, only black person. Uh, and so, yes, it was just, like, it was, it was a lot. And um, I remember times feeling just so, you know, I threatened to even leave and go back to the city because I was just heartbroken by some comments that were made. And ultimately what made me love him more, and I think this should be a standard for any person you're with, whether you're the same background or not, is the way he stood up for me. It was with respect. He still loved his parents and I, I love them as well. But the way he stood up and said, look, I love her. I have chosen her. And kind of was like, either you get on this train or get in front of it, but it is still leaving the station. That without my input, because I wanted to see, I wasn't going to fight this battle, right? Like I wanted to see how he would handle it, which actually is a lot on him too. Um, and he did so well. And, and that loyalty and that like partnership or, is one of the things that I value so much about him. But it, it was tough, um, but it still was worth it. You know, like my sister is biracial. Um, her mom was, is ger of German descent. My, we have the same dad, he's black. And she's amazing. Like I, I, it's crazy to me that people limit themselves. And sometimes I get messages from stupid people about like, you know, being with a white man or whatever else. And that's fine. You know, they're missing out. Right, I don't but I, it's, it's because you know a lot of there's people people of color. All it works both ways, right? Because you yeah. have, you know, it works, I mean, because there's also people of color. Like I've been told, my family's from the south, and uh -huh. I've been told, I mean, down south, dating outside your race is like you don't do that, and not yeah. not all, not everywhere. And that's I mean, it's it's definitely more progressive now, but it's right. still a thing, right? So yeah. It's just, and people, and there's people, and you hear it all the time. I'm sure you hear it when when you're trying to match, people let their biases slip. They'll say, oh, I could never, oh, oh, it's, and. You know, like, I don't, I've never been with a black Jeez, guy before. I mean, just sometimes you just want to smack people over the face. Right? 
yes it is so it is oh god it is yeah. so people um are, people you have them. made the awesome transition from reality to i mean you you are you're like miss teen usa you know like oh i was miss american teen miss teen usa is way cooler i just have to clarify <laughs> it's way cooler uh i was miss american teen 2005 years ago uh but but um, you 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 come, you've done so you've done so much i mean you and you've been able to you know go, go the reality route because some people don't make it out of the reality route you know some people don't Devin. but you've come you i mean guys go to her website and i'm telling you the places that you have been ha yeah. are are so stellar and you've lent your exp expertise to so many great outlets and help so many people making that transition from reality to to becoming a correspondent a host a, a television personality how was that journey like for you and what were some of the hiccups along the way because i get it you know yeah. being what yeah. we do is not hard and there's and it comes with a lot but for you what was that experience like i mean and you crush it can i just say that aside from just your tiktok dance videos and your bright <laughs> smile like you just crush it on all levels um, thank you so true so shout out to you um for keeping it going and just doing it so smoothly and even like this interview probably the best instagram instagram <laughs> live like most professional interview. So, um, yeah, thank you. you crush it. You really do. Thanks, um, what has the transition been like? You know, it too has been with its challenges and struggles, but like, I, there is no greater feeling for me than like, I got a, a, an email from someone the other day who just discovered love at first swipe, the show I had on TLC with Clinton Kelly. And, uh, he, binge watched it and I and basically was like you know I was so inspired you guys are really just like helping the world like I appreciate it and like moments like that make everything for me when I when I did the season finale so the last challenge I was on you guys they had us if you haven't watched it they had us climbing volcanoes and stuff in the snow and like whitewater rafting I had to be like rescued out because the <laughs> raft tipped over it was just a hot mess now my makeup didn't move so shout out to Makeup Forever and the waterproof product but it was a nightmare and there were real personal moments where I thought I am not going to come out of this. Like, I am not going to be able to complete this. I am, I may get injured. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. And I pushed through and I was very transparent about those feelings. You see me crying to myself. You see a real embodiment of fight or flight. You know, if I'm a head out with a person, that is what you were watching on, on the season finale of uh, the challenge free agents and, and, you know, fortunately, I don't want to give away spoilers if you didn't see it, but it was a really challenging moment for me, but also a life-changing one. And to this day, despite all the other TV stuff I've done five years on, I still get more comments from people coming up to me, even just happened the other day, um, being like, that inspired me, or because I, you could, I know I can, in whatever yeah. way. And so things like that really keep me motivated so that when you have heartbreaking moments of being told no you guys being a tv host i know tv personalities get a bad rap because a lot of them are stupid you know they are i will <laughs> give you a lot of them are dumb and don't put in necessarily the work but there's a lot of them who oh we got a lot of hearts on that there's a lot of them who are who get told no or you are not good enough on a daily basis daily. And i don't think people understand how I mean, you want to talk about rejection, right? Which is one of the human, one of the human conditions, like one of our number one, um, the things that we push away from. It's they say like it's falling and rejection are the two things that naturally, as a human, you do not want to feel and you naturally try and navigate away from. And being in television in that way, you are rejected all the time. All the on time. so many different levels. So on many, different, so levels, many yeah. different levels. Sometimes not told why. Sometimes told yes, but then behind your back, no things fall through and it is hard for, it is it is crushing like I have I have shed a tear and I don't I'm not a huge crier despite I'm not but I have certainly had some real soul searching moments and I'm fortunate that I have a, such a great mentor in Clinton Kelly who the season finale of his show The Great Spring Break Off is tonight on HGTV by the way check it out but Clinton's amazing he's been really helpful encouraging but yeah, it's hard. But when you love what you do, whatever it is, that's how you know you love it because right. you still wake up every day and you go, oh, that sucks. But all right, we're going to try this again. And I mean, I've been doing that since, I mean, the first show I ever did was on MTV about pageants in 2000, I think five yeah. um, or six. And so here we are 15 years later and I'm still the little engine that could just chug in. Well, oh, well people are, are definitely wanting you to pull into their to their stop because I mean, we saw you on Daily Pop, 
awesome. We see you. We see you constantly on Wendy Williams. Just every Rachel Ray. I mean, you're you're at all these great places, spreading your expertise, and there's such a light there. You're so fun to watch. And um, thank that's you. Because I had, I, I was like, I was watching Wendy, and I was like, who is it? Because I know everybody in the business. Yeah. And I was like, who is this Devin girl? Why am I? Where? Where? Why am I not? Why are we not friends? And then so when you came on on daily on um pop of the morning yeah like, no, it's a wrap i need me and this, ah. no 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 but again and then I, and then i started going back and do my research like i've been watching you on tv for forever forever but we're so glad that you are here and again where can they go to connect with you as far as love matchmaking and dating what's the name of the website so uh you can go to three day um if you go to three day rule.com tell them devin sent you that is the matchmaking company um that i'm with they're exceptional you can be in our pool for free if you're single share it forward it to your single friends uh we are still doing matchmaking even during lockdown and have seen some great success because people are home nobody has anything else to do you guys so if they're single and you're single like this is the time to really catch those like the people with full lives are great like if jason were single right now y'all would know his butt's at home he's not single don't jump on it but he's home in a way he's usually not <laughs> Right? <laughs> so you will be, will have more access. Same thing. So go get all your single friends, 3dayrule.com. That's T-H-R-E-E-D-A-Y-R-U-L-E.com. Um, and you can sign up to be in the free pool, or you can chat with uh, myself or one of my team members about um, being, possibly being a premium member, which is where we proactively, like, find matches for you. We screen them all for you. We give you coaching and dating advice. It's full service. Um, so you can do that. You can also follow me on Insta here if you don't already. Um, my website, devinsimone.com, is not very updated, but you'll find some links to videos there. Hopefully some new and amazing uh, projects um, out there. Someone said they tried to uh, connect with me once. Uh, Ursuline. She's yes, a huge Ursuline. fan. She, Ursuline, hi. She's, she's, hi, she's Ursuline. A, she's an amazing host, uh, does all kinds of great content. She's a huge fan. Um, she said she wanted to connect with you, so you guys are connecting now. And, yes. Um, you um you said the book you're, you're gonna the book the book is on the horizon. Yes, I really need to. I've been I've had people tell me to write a book for the last probably five six years, and I've been so busy. And yes, yes. yes. So beyond uh, everything you have going on now, Devin, where do you see yourself? What's like? What's next for you? Like what? Where? Where are we? Where is the train that could taken off to next? You know, working on some few big Corona has been great. Corona and Shark Tank repeats have been great for some ideas and inspiration. So, um, you know, working on some some business ideas, working on uh, possibly a show. We're still negotiating things, but we'll see. Hopefully you'll be seeing more of me, um, you know, later this year. Um, we'll continue to do the hosting thing, the book within the next year and a half. Year and a okay. half. We'll give you a year All and a right. half to make that. I really want to say two years, but we'll say year and a half um, <laughs> uh, for that to come out. And just, um, you know, anything that I can do certainly to help. But keep your eyes out for the TV because, like Jason said, you never know where I'm going to pop up or where you will see me. <laughs> for, um, for real. <laughs> you never know. The weave may be different, but the person still the same. <laughs> still the same. So, <laughs> so make sure you tune in and check that out. Um, and just, yeah, thank you to everyone that's, like, been supportive. Thank you to you, Jason, and for the joy you bring during this time. And, like, everyone who's ever supported me in my career, I love you guys so much and appreciate it so much. And I promise if you ever stop me on the street, don't hesitate because I will always say hi. That will not change. I may have a face mask on now. We may have to bump elbows versus a hug. But I promise I will always, um, you know, say hi. And, and I appreciate the support. We're we're here for that. I want to give a shout out to the red bottoms you have behind you. On, this uh, is my closet. You guys want to tour my closet real quick? Yeah, let's do I mean, okay. those those are killer. Are, 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 <laughs> Thank those the, you. are those the 600 or the 400? Those are the highest ones. I mean, I haven't worn them in years now. I don't remember. But yeah, these are the highest. This is when platforms were back in. Remember that wild, yeah. that, like the little platform thing? And then there? below you have your Bond Number no. 9 fragrance collection. Oh, what? so yeah, my perfume. I need to organize it. My little perfume section there. Yeah. And then, uh, so my boo, see, this is why you got to follow the person who loves you. Well, he built this closet for me to move in. So when we moved in together, after we got engaged, he said, I'll build you a closet because there wasn't enough room for stuff. And so he did. And I love this little closet. I designed it. He built it. These are my favorite. I don't wow. wear any of these. Fun why fact, I once, I once wore those in MTV to do an interview. I was pitching the execs, and I thought I was such a badass and had on this black suit and those heels. Definitely tripped. <laughs> definitely tripped in their open concept office floor plan just fell flat on my face have not worn them since 
Um, but yeah, this is my little, this is, I, you, I love my little closet. Your closet reminds me of Big and Carrie's closet rendezvous <laughs> in the Sex and the City, the movie, where she's like, the Manolo Blahnix, you know? Well, well, thank you. It is not, it is, her closet was like 99, nine times bigger than this, but this is my little heaven. It's my oasis. I can sit and do my makeup. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for it. And I know it was made with love, so I love it. Um, well, we love yeah. you, Devin. Thank you so much for chatting this morning. Um, I'm going to have all my followers go and check you out on the three-day rule and check everything else you're doing. And again, thank you for your time. You're epic. You stay safe. And I'm sure we're going to talk again soon. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone watching. Jay, you're amazing. Orange looks good on you. And I will talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye, Devin. Bye.